Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 82 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series, where today I've got a really big water boiler thingy. I've got a really big fission reactor with a whole bunch of sodium, but still not nearly enough, but still a lot, and we're getting lots more every second, every tick, we're getting more and more sodium. This has been running for like hours, but we've got 33,000 buckets of sodium and climbing 33 million millibuckets uh today's episode i would like to build a really big steam turbine if i may so uh I, i've chosen to go with the following size 11 by 11 by 18 height uh so that's the plan right so i'm sticking with the same base size that we've been doing for all the other components now this is definitely not the largest you can do i think the largest i want to say might be 17 by 17 by 18 but i want to go you know I, I kind of like the idea of 11 by 11, right? Like it sounded sounded cool to me. So that's basically what I got going on. So uh, I think I've got enough turbine casings. I may not, um, but we'll find out. Uh, so so I, I kicked off the auto crafting so that we'd be ready for this. And then uh, some of the requirements or components needed other things, right? So we'll see. 11 hooray yeah like some of the components that i built after i built the turbine casings required turbine casings so then my numbers got off so we'll see what happens we'll see what happens and then i can get out my building gadget it's hooray still here ba -ba -ba -doop -boop -bop. it's looking pretty good to me so now we want it to be 18 high, which means we need to place 17 blocks. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 blocks, right? And I just want to double check that math. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Beautiful. And then I should be able to boop. Boop, boop. And I think I want you, am I already out of these? How is that possible? I told you my math might have been off. Told you my math might have been off because I needed some extra turbine stuffs. Let's see. Just get another stack of them, I guess. I don't know. I, don't know. I have no idea. Because the number I needed here was a number. And clearly I needed more of that number than I thought. But we'll get there. Turbine, you coming? Let's go, chief. All right, so then you're going to come to here. Does that look good? Actually, undo you. Yeah, that looks cool. So my, 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 my height levels were all good. That looks good, right? Yeah, I like it. All right, several more turbine casings later, and we should be pretty cool. Nice. All right. Good deal. Good deal. Now for structure glass, I think I got enough of you. I guess we'll find out. So I should be able to copy that, right? And you should be good to go. Look at how big this turbine is going to be. I'm a little excited about how big this turbine is. I ain't going to lie. And I had no resource problems, by the way. I will probably at some point need to rerun my, my mining quarry thingy, but you know, Still, it is cool. It's super cool. I'm just going to undo that in case there was one. And then what are we looking at? Structural glass. Yeah, I couldn't fit it all in my inventory. But if I math this correctly, we should be pretty close. Yes. Nice. See, I know what I'm doing. Cool. Now I have to remember how these things work. So, um... The rules is, the rules is, I forget the rules. There's rules and I forget them. But there's there's those things and then there's other things that have to go up top. So let's let's figure out them their rules. Uh, so I know that I need, because there's a, if you look on the FTB wiki, there's a, there's a nice little handy chart that tells you how many resources for each component you need. So turbine vents, we needed 333. So pretty close to that number right there which is cool. Uh, I'm going to put away some things I don't super need at this exact moment. Turbine vents. Uh, and then we need pressure dispersers. We needed 80-ish of them. Cool. 
Uh, and then we needed 167 saturating condensers. It's super nice knowing exactly what you need, isn't it? Very, very super nice. I'm gonna put away these things and I don't probably need you anymore for this minute. Uh, I don't need my bow out at the moment either. I'm not gonna get into any combat. And if I am, I'm pretty OP, so I'm not worried about it. Sweet. And then uh, we need electromagnetic coils times five. We need uh, turbine blades times 18, I believe is the number we need. And then we needed one rotational complex. So let's see how to build this massive structure. All right, so the whole top part should be turbine bends, right? Um, do you think I can, maybe that's why I didn't, ah, that's why, that's why. That's why I was way low on turbine casings. That would explain it. Do you think I can exchange her them? That sounds like a really bad idea, but we're gonna try. We are gonna try. So if I wanted, yeah, this is why. This is why that was a thing. Got it. That makes sense though. Like I knew my math wasn't wrong. I was like, wait, why is my math so off? Like I knew exactly how many items I needed. Why not right? Now I know why. Haha. Uh -huh. uh, I'm going to put away this bucket. All right, how bad of an idea is this? Do you think? You know what? Maybe I can't. I can't. I can't delete tile entities with this. Well, that's at least good. That's at least good job. Good job building gadgets, Direwolf. I will be honest. I haven't worked on building gadgets in a little while, and that's on me. All right, back in a sec. Right. So the whole top needs to be turbine vents, like this. Sweet, right? And then you also want turbine vents on the side and underneath that you're going to want a bunch of saturating condensers. So what we're gonna want, I don't know how many rows of this we're gonna need, but we're gonna figure it out together. Saturating condensers. We're basically gonna want a bunch of you. Cool. And then saturating condensers so then we probably also want more saturating condensers now i have as many as i need in my inventory for this multi-block to form properly so i'm just going to keep placing them until i run out that is my plan that is my plan oh look looks like we're about to run out okay cool okay cool and then underneath that should be pressure dispersers. I guess, I guess. Saturating condenser, pressure dispersers. Sure, why not? I don't know what I'm doing. And I never said that I do. All right, so turbine vent, not yet. I will do more of those pressure dispersers. Can they go on the same level as these? So the rules are that the whole layer of the rotational complex must be filled with pressure dispersers. Uh, that's cool. So that'll be this guy is on the same lower as your pressure dispersers. Vents can go on the sides. So I guess we'll be doing a lot of side things there, I guess. Sure, I feel like we have a lot more vents than would go on the sides. I feel like maybe we should have another layer of vents. But maybe I'm wrong, we'll find out. So what I'm going to do is we can have a bunch of saturating condensers here. I guess we'll find out. Saturating condensers, where are you guys? You're already placed. Uh, then we want electromagnetic coils with the saturating condensers. Cool. And then relatively centered to that. So I'm going to just put you here because that's centered-ish, right? Or are you centered, actually? Yeah, no, you're centered. Right, yeah, that's that's the center-ish, right? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yeah, that's center. So then you're gonna get the rotational complex, and then you're going to have pressure dispersers all around you. So you're gonna be on this same level. And you can have empty air up there, and that's cool. So pressure dispersers, we've got two more of, and the math checks out. Nice, okay, cool. So then the only other thing left are turbine vents, which I feel like we have a lot of turbine vents, a lot more than I would expect to. But I'm thinking we replace this whole level with turbine vents, basically. 
I think that that's accurate. And we'll find out if that's enough turbine vents to make it like make sense. Right? So the top row here should still be turbine casings, by the way. So we'll address that in a minute. Yeah, see last time I built one of these I was kind of just following a guide and uh, there's not a guide for this one So I'm not a hundred percent sure what I'm doing, but that's why I said we're winging it. We're figuring it out together folks Cool, so then you to here you to here and then we don't really need turbine casings as much anymore But you should all be turbine vents now, right? So you should be coming Like this and maybe this is where all these turbine vents get used at hopefully I'm right Hopefully I'm right. I mean, it's a lot of turbine vents that we have to place here, so hopefully I'm correct about this. I mean, I feel like we have a lot of turbine vents left, but I guess we'll find out. So the rotational complex is in the center, right? Is that correct? Yeah, he looks like he's in the center. So now we just need the blades uh, and... Is that it? What am I missing down? Isn't there something I need down the middle? Oh yeah, I need shafts, right? Turbine rotors. I need nine of those turbine rotors. I need three more. They ain't hard to make. That should be quick. I knew there was something I was missing. Cool. So you're going to come down here. good why are you why are you low why are you not right so I've got how many of these left in here a, a little more than a, a hundred and nine ish I'm not quite sure about this all right so I'm doing this the opposite direction so what I did is I started from the bottom and built my nine things up placed the rope see like that right so I did nine up and then I placed the rotational complex on top of it Okay, and then we need to place our electromagnetic coils on top of that. They have to be touching each other and the rotational complex, right? Um, so completely fill the interior layer around the rotational complex with pressure dispersers. Complete. Place electromagnetic coils above the dispersers. They must touch the rotational complex and each other. Build the frame, the perimeters of the walls, out of turbine casings. You may have more empty layers above the coils to make room for more vents. Okay. So that would be, I think, these guys now. So what I should do is clear a three by three of this. And this might wind up using all my vents. And then that would be cool. So I think we just needed some more empty layers. Cool. So now we've got the vents. And then we'll find out if we have this correct or not. So that would be vents, boom, boom, boom. We're pretty close. I should go back and see how many vents in total I had at the beginning of this episode, because I might have made a few extra. I don't know. You know what it is? Maybe I have to fill in this, this row too. That might be it. Yeah, let me, let me do that real fast. I'm like 99% sure this is going to be right. If it's right, I will have one extra turbine vent when I place this last row. So if I'm right about this, which I think I am, we should be good now. And we should have one turbine vent. Booyah! Perfect. That's what I wanted to see. All right, cool. Now I'm going to go back inside this structure. Um, because above here, what we want to place is the saturating condensers now. So all my saturating condensers are still there. I'm just going to go ahead and place the last five that I need. And then that should be it. So the two 
So I don't need this turbine. I don't need as much structural glass anymore because I removed a lot of that. This guy should go here and then we're ready to go, right? Now, similar to over here, so the, the, the cool, the cool water will come out of the turbine vents, right? And we should have a turbine valve. We should probably get three turbine valves. Does that sound fair? That should be a quick craft, right? And that should be good times. And I, I might wind up moving the water bit up. We'll see in a minute. Uh, looks like I have a couple pieces of glass in there still to fill. So let's get some structure glass. Is that what it's called? Yeah. And then I also have my turbine blades. Remember, it's two blades per rotor, right? So one, two. And that should be cool. Nice. Yeah. How cool does that look? How big? That's awesome. It's awesome is what it is. So I kind of want to replicate what I have here, right? So our... Our hot steam, that's right. So you shouldn't be a boiler valve for hot steam. You should be the boiler valve for water. So let me adjust that. Input only, right? So water is gonna come back out of here and into here, okay? And then we're going to have the hot steam coming out of the boiler valve that we're gonna place down here, okay? That shouldn't be too bad. Now we might need multiples of these, kind of like we needed over on the other turbine, because the flow of water is going to be pretty huge. But we'll see what happens, right? We'll start with this, and we'll go from there. Um, so we're going to have a turbine valve for you. Um, and let me place these guys so that maybe you want to behave. Oh yeah, you do. Look at that. Booyah! That is cool. Max flow 10, 000, 10 million millibuckets, as opposed to 1 million millibuckets. That is, I think it's good. I think that's good. Vents 333 limiting, blades 18 limiting. I don't like I don't like the word limiting in red. Red is usually bad. Red is usually bad. I don't know what that means. What's up with that, yo? What up with that? Vents is limiting too. I'm following the guide that uh, is on FTB Wiki that says this should be the most efficient structure. If I have to tweak these, I will. Let's go with this and see what happens. But anyway, so you're here, so we're gonna have you here. Yeah, should have checked that before I did that, but boiler valve here. You're going to output steam, right? And steam is a gas. Right, now before I connect you, I wanna be ready for the water input, right? So let's get our ultimate mechanical pipes here. And that's going to go straight across to that. Cool. Now, did I have to set you to export? I don't know that I did, but we'll find out what happens. So when I connect this to Steam, so let's over here have a turbine valve that's going to be a plug. Flux plug. For the generators network. But I actually don't want you connected just yet. I want to see how much what happens when we activate this. And then we'll get that connected, okay? So that should go, you do all your steam thing, you produced 100 million RF in that momentary little spin, and that was kinda cool. And how do we do up here water-wise? Not bad. Now we do have some, I wanna dump excess mode, whatever that means. I think that means water. I don't love that this says limiting. That's really bothering me really bothering me do I need more vents is that what I'm hearing I don't know I don't know but let's turn on our reactor and see what happens you ready so if I activate you our sodium level should go down significantly right um, and we're now doing okay boil rate is high Superheated CDM. I, I think we're keeping up with this. Boil capacity is 25 million, and we're doing 200,000. I think we're good. <laughs> now, to be fair, 
This guy can go up to 328 millibuckets per tick, and we're currently doing 10. So, yeah, but also yeah. Okay. Nice. And this guy's spinning, you know, a little bit. A little bit. Right? Uh, flow rate is 200,000. Max flow is 10 million. Capacity is a lot, right? I'm feeling, you know, pretty good at this. Uh, we are generating 513,000 RF a tick. Cool. So maybe we want to... Maybe what I should do, I'm going to scram this guy real quick, and I'll tell you why. We're going to do a thing. So I'm going to set up our little safety valve before we do much else over here, right? So this guy I had two block gap, right? So I'll just pop one. I want to make sure that we're not messing with anything. And one, right? Boom and boom. And I'm gonna plop down my powered latch, kinda like we had before. And this guy will be high temperature, right? And this guy can be activation. And that's how it was over here, right? And that's it, right? High temperature and activation, easy peasy. So when temperature gets high, you're gonna emit a redstone signal, which will toggle this latch. Um, and then that'll flip him off, right? And he'll be, he'll be, what's up? So right is off. Cool. Yes, I like this. I like this indeed. Um, so if we wanted to make this button activated, we could totally do that too, by the way. All right, and now he's running. So now we can mess with this a little bit. And if we run into temperature problems, it'll immediately kill itself. And that's good. That's what we want. So what if we wanted like 50? Boom. 50 burn rate, 50 millibuckets per dick production of stuff, which by the way, speaking of production of stuff, how are you doing, chief? I mean, a lot. We're gonna have to deal with that nuclear waste in like a minute, right? But you're still doing fine. So your current boil rate is a million and your capacity is 25 million. So we should be able to do 25 times that, which is cool, which is cool. And I can also do this if we don't wanna to manually toggle that. Right, which is which is not a bad idea. But I should also get my ultimate pressurized tubes. I feel like we're gonna need more of those. So I'm just gonna kick off the craft of another 60-ish. Um, but let's be prepared for running over to you, right? I feel like that would be smart. So where is my exchanger? Because I'm going to need some sandstone. Gonna need more sandstone than that, buddy. Okay, uh, give me sandstone, boop. So basically what I'm thinking is we wanna, we wanna be relatively smart about this. And try not to cause a nuclear accident. We're gonna try our very best. Didn't I do three by three? Am I crazy? Well, I guess you didn't go. Okay, fair enough. I thought I did three by three. I knew I did three by three. So I'm like, why is stuff falling? Much better. Okay, so there's our fission reactor. Ish. There we go. Now remember, just because we're being extra super duper triple careful, we're going to place our pressurized tubes. We're not gonna connect them to that yet. And then we're just gonna run you guys straight over to here. All right, make sure not to bump into any other pressurized tubes. All right, and then we're gonna do this. And maybe we'll bring that down one more. Pretty sure my reactor is not running. Pretty sure I wasn't about to make a big mistake there. I, I think, yeah, we'll see. So that should be good, right? And then that will feed into that line that will then go to the processing line, which speaking of, I wanna make sure it's daytime so that when we do process this stuff, it'll, you know, do the thing. Cool. So you guys go away. I don't think I need so much structural glass anymore or reactor glass for that matter at this moment. 
Cool, nice and tidy. Uh, so let's go connect you now. Okay, that would be you. Now, do you auto output? I never knew. Okay, yeah, no, you don't. So let's do, you're not in wrench mode, you're in items mode. So now pull, you should have no gas stored, which is cool. You over here should be cooking. We got there just in time to see the nuclear waste drop to nothing, right? We have a bunch of polonium stored, ready for processing in this guy. These guys aren't even storing anything yet because we have such a massive amount of storage in our pressurized tubes um, that there's just a ton of polonium in this tube. So you can kind of see it, it's a little green. So those tubes are really storing your bulk of stuff right there. So now that we've got nuclear waste handled, let's activate our reactor again and make some tweaks, right? So what if we wanted to bump those up to 75 millibuckets per tick? Boom. We are now producing, oh boy, scrammed. Did you see that? Good thing we set that up because whatever we did was not good. Whatever we did was not good. So what happened there? Should we pay a little closer attention? What if we make it 60? We just may not have enough sodium as a buffer yet. 70? Temperatures are going up and then poof, straight down. So what happens there? What's the dealio? What's the dealio? I want to see it happen slower so I can understand what's going wrong. Temperature is definitely going up. We have enough sodium, so why aren't you cooling fast enough? I don't understand. I don't understand, actually, why that's not going. I could understand if we didn't have enough sodium, but we kind of do. Why is our temperature going up? Interesting. Interesting. Let's see what's happening over here when I activate this guy. You've got enough water going on. You've got enough of this happening. Huh. We've got enough water. We've got enough sodium. Why you no cool fast enough? I don't understand. So you know what I'm finding, guys? Is as more coolant is filling up the tank, we're able to run this a little bit longer. So I think you want to have as much coolant in the tank as possible before you start bumping up your, your, your burn rates. So like if I set you to 70 now, are you going to be able to maintain this? See, now we're gaining heat again. Right. But if I set you to 65, you're nice and cool. 67, how are we doing on heat here? 67 is okay. See, we're cooling now, right? 68, just playing to understand how this metric works. 69, also nice and cool. Okay. 70, all of a sudden we're cool. Okay. Oh, right, because he's not running. <laughs> okay, well, there's your problem. <laughs> I didn't realize he had, he, had, he had flipped off. So let's turn you on again. So 67, we're definitely gaining heat, see? If I set you to 66, we are kind of losing heat. So we're losing a little bit, right? Um, but I'm going to set you back to 67 here, okay? And we, well, yeah, see. Did I do something wrong? Nope, you just, you just couldn't handle it. 67 was too much. So see how fast it goes if, with 67. See how fast it, it overheats? It's real quick. Um, but I think what we'll find is as more sodium fills into this coolant tank, we will be able to handle... Okay, something's happening that's bad. You know what? It might be you are over full. Yeah, you're full on that. That's There's your problem on that side. I was like, this is all of a sudden much worse. So let's uh, disable limit here. Yeah. Dump out all that power. <laughs> it's a good thing we set up the safety valve. See? Lessons in safety valvery. Where's my Geiger counter? I just want to make sure. I'm just curious. Have, like, I'm, I'm assuming that we're catching it fast enough. Oh, yeah, look, we are perfect. We are perfect here. How's this guy doing? Oh, look, all radiation is gone from the last nuclear accident we had. Woohoo! All right, so you're at 66. So if I turn you on, see how he's stable now? Nice. All right, so 67. 
he's gaining a little bit of temperature. But I think as this sodium tank fills up more, it's going to be okay. So as we get more and more sodium in here, we'll be able to turn the temperature up higher, I think. So what I'm gonna do is we'll see that this will burn out at 67 in a moment. I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna leave it on. It'll probably flip off for safety reasons. Right? Uh, let's see, is it is it slowing down? It feels like it's slowing down, right? Because remember, we're constantly pumping in more sodium from our base, right? More and more sodium is being produced out there. So at some point, we're gonna pass the threshold at 67. We'll see. This is how much we're dissipating, I guess? That's cool. So see how it's slowing down? I think at some point we're gonna cross a threshold and we're gonna, see look, it just happened. It just happened. So now we're dissipating heat at 67, right? Because we've got enough coolant in the tank still to dissipate that heat. Cool, so now our temperature is going down. So we need more coolant is the long and the short of it, right? It's not as long as you have some amount of coolant in the tank, it can cool it. You need to have like a pretty full tank if you wanna run at your max burn rate. So just to review that again, I just bumped it up to 68, right? Um, and we may or may not hit our threshold. Maybe I wanna do like 67.5. Cause remember you can do decimals, right? So yeah, now that's lowering, right? That's cool, I like it. So now if I bump it up to 68, how close are we to being able to run that amount? Heat's going up still, but see how the dissipation is increasing? Yeah, because as we put more and more sodium in here that's being produced back at our base, we're handling that better. So at some point, again, we're going to cross that threshold because we're pumping more and more sodium in from our base. And then we're going to start lowering our heat, right? It's about to happen. Come on, about to happen. Go. That's cool. Okay. So yeah, that makes sense. Nice. So we learned something about coolant today on our nuclear reactors. So this should be safe to run at 68. Uh, let's see how our heat dudes are handling this like so your boil rate is 1.3 million and again you can handle 25 so we're well in hand here uh you have our flow rate 1.3 our capacities our max flow rate is 10.6 so again you know almost 10 times so we should be more i think these two are going to be able to handle this at max burn we just need to wait for more sodium which is kind of cool right and we're already producing 3.5 million fe per tick right so that's neat and uh because i've got everything hooked up if we head back here and by the way i did chunk load those chunks but if we head down here we should see a pretty impressive amount of power coming in yeah input 3.5 million fe per tick that is cool beans i like it i think i think that's i think that's pretty successful we just need to wait for more sodium now so i think what i'm going to do is turn you off for the time being and then let more sodium fill in here Ideally, we have this full, and then we also have some excess in a buffer back at our base, ready to, you know, go hog wild and whatnot. So I'm debating if there's like a way to bump that up. Um, yeah, because sodium, the only way to get that is, you know, is there liquid sodium that's doable short of no. So only sodium becomes liquid sodium. Um, brine obviously does the thing and you're doing that, yeah. So it's either make more towers or, or be patient. Those are your two options at this point, right? Which, you know, both good options, both good options. Not bad. I mean, we're producing a lot of sodium to be fair. We're doing pretty good, but yeah, we would need more towers, um, you know, or make them bigger, I guess. Um, so this is a sub-basement, so if I wanted to, I could go lower, right? We could absolutely go lower and just add to the tower, because I think 18 is the max height of them, but I'm not sure. We'll see. I think I'll just be patient for a little bit. So how about this? We will wrap up the episode here, because we're at that point. I'll let the game run for a bit. We'll come back next episode to hopefully a full tank of sodium, and then we'll see how much we're capable of doing. Like, if I checked you out now, could you do 69 per se? We're gonna find out. I'm gonna turn you back on for a minute. Yeah, see, 69, no problem, right? 70, getting warm. But again, as more sodium gets pumped in here, cross threshold, be good, everybody happy, right? So for now, let's wrap up the episode.
Um, so wrapping up point, Daryl 20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we'll come back next time. We'll, we'll amp this up even further so that we have like a massive amount of RF production. Uh, we, we will probably then use that RF to generate more uranium in some way, shape, or form. <coughs> some way, shape, or form. Sorry, I just had a little cough there. A little cough. To make lots and lots of uranium. Uh, and then good times will be had by all. All right, guys. Take it easy.